We got a revolution, people! And oh my god, the uproar over this issue has been absolutely immense. Let's talk about the Minecraft revolution. Now, as a brief recap as to what's going on in the Minecraft verse, if you will, Minecraft does these community polls, and for these community polls, they give the community of Minecraft a few options that they can pick to what will be added to Minecraft. This most often takes the form of a mob vote as to what mob or random NPC that dots the map will be added to Minecraft in, the, in an upcoming patch, and the community votes between what they want. This go-around has been the penguin, the armadillo, and the crab. The winner of the vote will be added to Minecraft. And the losers, well, they may get added in the future, but like, I mean, come on. Now you may be asking, j big whoop, what's going on here? Well, Minecraft has been doing this for quite a while. And Minecraft being the biggest game in the entire world, a large section of its player base has been absolutely underwhelmed by the amount of content that has been added or updated to Minecraft over the last few years. And it's all come to a head with all these frustrations, coming to a head with the recent mob vote, where people mostly agree that all three ideas, the penguin, armadillo, and crab, and their functionality in Minecraft are all good ideas. And they all should be added. They shouldn't just be up for one to get in and the others to just be languished and forgotten. Another good idea not added to the game. This anger has been incentivized when modders were able to add one of the mobs, a single modder, within 16 hours. They were able to add one of these mobs into the game, into one version of the game. Bear in mind there's two versions. You have Java and you have Bedrock. But if one jabroni was able to add one of these mobs in 16 hours, then the company behind the biggest game in the entire world and all the money they rake in should be able to add all three. And that has been generally the sentiment going along with this Minecraft revolution. Now, gaming uprises have been absolutely nothing new. They've happened before. They will continue to happen to varying degrees of success. And they're especially hard to pull off a game like Minecraft that is as big as Minecraft because the sad reality of the situation is most of the player base just is not going to care. They treat the game casually and, for the most part, just won't care. Most of them probably don't even know what's going on. But it's been a focal point in the community for discussion at large about the greed of corporate enterprises in the video game industry. And I'm no stranger to talking about company greed in video games. Company greed is pervasive across all mediums and all industries. But that greed can hit a, a particular sore spot for many when it affects their favorite hobby or their favorite passion. A game they use to unwind if they feel that that game is being undermined or compromised on the backs of another corporate executive getting another yacht or something akin to that, it can flare up some frustrations. And we've had many, many, many examples throughout the years of corporate greed. One of the most recent ones has been with Unity, the engine, where they wanted to add a surcharge for every download or install to the developer that a consumer would utilize for a Unity run game. It was one of the biggest backlashes in video game history because it also compromised not just consumers but also developers and publishers. Now on the surface, I mean, without context and without being in the Minecraft scene, you may be staring at this recent backlash that Microsoft and Mojang are receiving and going, okay, well, what's the big deal? One mob compared to three. Okay, cool. Big whoop. But I find more, more often than not, a lot of these Tinder points have been piled full of dry wood for over and over throughout years of just corporate greed adding another piece of dry log or dry wood or timber to the pile. And eventually, a single spark can ignite a blaze. And that seemingly is what's happening here. Sure, some people are just memeing it up. I'm sure we've all seen those TikTok edits of people using poor man's poison and, like, co-opting labor posters with a whole bunch of Minecraft memes and skins. And it's kind of funny, I'll, I'll admit. But I think one of the biggest questions that's going to come about with this whole quote-unquote Minecraft revolution is, what will come of it? Will enough people affect the bottom line of Microsoft and Mojang enough for them to budge in this position, or is this a fleeting thing? Because that has happened in the past. Where companies may get some backlash, they just put their head down, wait out the storm, or compromise for the here and now, but later down the line, they just do what they wanted to do to begin with. And we kind of confront one of the sad realities of organizing these, like, consumer 
backlash campaigns. People's attention spans are extremely short, and they'll move on quickly. That's why one of the legitimate strategies over the years for many developers has just been waited out because people will lose interest over time. The whole reason that didn't happen with Unity is because develop developers and publishers cannot afford to be short-sighted. They can't afford to have a short attention span. Unity was affecting their bottom line. For consumers, a new game or a new update will come along down the line. So what will come from the whole Minecraft revolution, I can't really say. I'm not sure if anyone can really say right now. The ideal situation would be that Mojang would add all three of these mobs, would add the penguin, the armadillo, and the crab, because that's flat out more content for the player base, hungry for more. But I think in a unique position for Minecraft, I've always been of the opinion that I personally didn't want Minecraft to change significantly all too much too quickly. I feel Minecraft has a core and intrinsic value and feel to it that can be very therapeutic and relaxing. And if you continually add on things on top of that to obfuscate that simplistic undertone that Minecraft has going for it, you can compromise the entire feel of the game. I don't think Minecraft has gotten to that point yet, at least for me. I've never been a quote-unquote hardcore Minecraft player, but I've dipped in and out of the game throughout the years, and the new additions have largely all been quite nice. They fit the ideas of the game, they've elevated the fun and intrinsic value of the core components and pillars and foundational aspects of what made Minecraft so popular to begin with. Minecraft is also a very moddable game, so communities and the community at large can just create their own content cycle. We've seen that happen before. Now, I don't think that's a good enough of a justification for Mojang to not add stuff to the game. And I think when you get to the point where pretty much it's a consensus that everyone wants all three of these mobs, I really don't see the problem with adding all three. Now, some people have tried to come out and defend it, but let's be honest here, perception reigns king here. When a modder can add one of these mobs to one of the versions within 16 hours by themselves, an entire team not being able to add all three feels disingenuous to the max. It gives the visage that the company is inherently lazy and refusing to add content to a game, just choosing to ride out the success that they've had instead of building upon it. Giving players new and exciting content to sink their teeth into, and just being overall low effort. Again, and I talked about this back in the videos where I talked about the whole Unity situation. For these kinds of situations, the reality of coding and the difficulties that entails is irrelevant here. The perception amongst the player base is king. That is what matters, because that is what people will act off of. You do not need to be a carpenter to know when a house does not have a ceiling. You don't need to be an electrician to know that the light switch isn't working. We've had these moments throughout the years in the gaming industry, where people try and say that it's not that simple, and then enough backlash happens, and it turns out it is that simple. Remember when the Xbox One was first announced, and Angry Joe interviewed somebody about backwards compatibility to the Xbox 360 games? And their retort was, are you a game developer? Then what happened? Xbox One got a massive backlash, and all of a sudden, hey guys, we're working on backwards compatibility. World of Warcraft. People wanted classic for years. They wanted a vanilla version of World of Warcraft, because they were disinterested with the modern state of the game. You think you do, but you don't. That was what the developers, or that is what Blizzard said at BlizzCon, in response to someone asking about a classic version of World of Warcraft. What happened later down the line? World of Warcraft Classic got released, and then became arguably more popular than retail. And there's a bunch of these individual examples of moments throughout the games industry, where people made it out as if the consumers were asking for too much, when it was possible the entire time. It just required some effort. And this, more so than backwards compatibility or World of Warcraft Classic, feels like the ultimate you can do more. When people are merely asking for three mobs to get added and for the player base not to have to choose one out of three good ideas. I don't think the player base is asking for the moon. I don't think they're asking for anything unreasonable. And I haven't even heard a take that people want all three at the same time tomorrow. If it genuinely does take a little bit to implement, I think people would be happy just so long as all three mobs get added to the game at some point. But the notion of just making the players choose between one out of three good ideas, no one wants to do that crap for a game. People just want to be able to utilize and interact with and interface with all three good ideas. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Very, very interesting. And I'm arguably more interested to see how Mojang responds, or if they even respond, to all that's going on. 
And with that, I think I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content, and I greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the Minecraft revolution. Are people making a big deal out of nothing, or do you think enough is enough when it comes to Minecraft? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions. Please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content. I greatly appreciate it. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload and stream in the future. And follow my socials in the description down below. Follow me on Twitch at jmolsg. On Twitter as well, jmolsg. Thank you all for tuning in. Stay safe. Have a great day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.